This is the video where you'll learn everything that you need to know about your DJI Osmo Action 3. What I like about the DJI Osmo Action cameras is that they're small, they're versatile, they're pretty fun to use without compromising on the video quality. So I'm going to show you how to get some spectacular shots using this Osmo Action 3. And I'm also going to talk about the different modes and settings, when to use them and how to get the most from them. And I'll talk about the DJI Mimo app and how it works with the action cameras. And as well, throughout the video, I will make occasional comparisons to the GoPro Hero 11, just in case you're using this as a buyer's guide. So if you just bought one and you're getting started, the next section is for you. But if you've already set up your Osmo Action 3 and you've had some experience using it, you can skip to the next step. So firstly, like every other action camera, you're gonna need a micro SD card. This one is a card made by Insta360 and it works fine with this camera. DJI says you need a UHS I Speed Grade 3 micro SD card to be able to read and write high resolution video. Okay, so remove all the protective stuff, but leave this little strip on the batteries because you actually use this to remove it from the camera. To open the battery compartment, push upwards in the direction of this arrow. So that's actually towards the top of the camera where you'll find the red record button. Slot in your micro SD card. And press it down so it clicks into place, place the battery inside, and then batten down the hatches. If you see any orange, that means your camera isn't sealed properly, and therefore it's not waterproof. So make sure the hatches are all closed correctly if you're taking the camera underwater. The Adventure Combo Pack includes three batteries and this nice little charger, so that's pretty useful, isn't it? And DJI says that each battery it's gonna last up to 160 minutes if you're shooting at 1080p, but most likely you are gonna be shooting at a higher resolution. Bear in mind that DJI says that you can use this action camera at temperatures of between minus 20 degrees centigrade and plus 45 degrees centigrade. So compare that to the GoPro Hero 11, and the battery is gonna last up to 120 minutes at 1080p, 30 frames per second. So the DJI has a few extra minutes there. And as well, the GoPro Hero 11 can only go down to minus 10 uh, and not minus 20. So with the DJI Adventure Combo, you get extra batteries. And by the way, when you open the lid of the battery charger, you get green lights to tell you which batteries are fully charged and orange for those not fully charged. To charge the battery while it's still in the camera, just open the USB-C hatch. Same as the battery hatch door, press in the direction of the arrow. And this is also where you plug in an external microphone. The battery case also has places to store micro SD cards. And once you've taken everything out of the box and all the protective coverings off, where are you gonna store this camera? So at least you've got a protective covering over the camera, which you can actually switch with a filter. But I'll talk more about that later. The DJI Osmo Action does not come with a case as the GoPro Hero does. But I've actually seen a few pretty cool looking cases on AliExpress for not too much money, so that might be worth investing in. If you don't have the DJI Mimo app already, you'll need to download it to be able to activate your camera. If you're using an Android device, you'll need to download the Mimo app from the DJI website, as it's no longer in the Android Play Store. The app also allows you to control your Osmo action remotely, as well as providing a few other features, such as editing, change settings, live stream, switch modes, and so on to open the app and connect to the camera. Activate the camera and install any firmware updates if you get prompted to do so. So just like with the GoPro Hero 11, the DJI Osmo Action 3 also has a quick record function. So you can start recording without powering on the camera. So all you gotta do is press the record button. The camera switches on, starts recording, and then it switches itself off again. The difference between the Action 3 and the Hero 11 is that when you press the record button again to stop recording, the DJI device actually gives you three seconds to stop it from switching off again. Whereas the GoPro does not, it just switches off and there's nothing you can do to stop it. You might want to keep filming, you might have seen another opportunity to get another shot and you can just tap the screen and keep filming. Whereas with the GoPro, it's gonna shut down so you're gonna have to power up and you know, you might miss that opportunity. 
The DJI Osmo Action 3 has a magnetic mounting system. So that, that makes it easy to remove from one attachment, say your selfie stick, and then you can just place it on a chest strap or a helmet mount or something like that. And as well, this magnet can actually be used to stick the camera to a metal object, for example, a lamppost. So this is great for improvising shots on the fly. With the GoPro Hero 11, you're going to need to unscrew the camera from the two prong screw mount every time. So it is going to be a little bit slower. Now the magnet system on the Osmo Action 3 also uses the spring loaded catch. So it's not just the magnet holding it on. And that does make it very secure. So you just press in at the sides and it releases the catch. When you have the camera in a protective frame, you also have the option to mount the camera on the side. This way you can film using a vertical framing. Or you might just want to mount the camera to something like your car or your bicycle from the side rather than from the bottom. So that's a little bit of extra versatility for the Osmo Action 3. So let's power it on and try recording some video. To power on, long press the power button on the side of the camera. And this is actually also the quick selection button. But I'll talk about that later. Note that when you power on, you get this kind of rising melody. And a falling melody when you power off. So it's a good idea to remember that because if you're in a situation where you can't actually see the camera, maybe you're wearing it, you know, with the harness and you're cycling or something. So now press the record button on the top of the camera and you're going to get a ping sound and it starts recording. Press the record button again to stop recording. And now you'll get another falling melody. Because uh, one of the most common mistakes made when recording video, I think we've all done it, which is to stop recording when you thought you were starting recording and then starting recording when you think you've stopped recording. And then you end up with all the in-between bits and none of the actual bits that you wanted. So if you think about these tones, when you're starting and stopping recording, then it will help you to avoid that mistake. So now that we've recorded some video, how do we access it so that we can use it? Connect your Osmo Action 3 to the DJI Mimo app. And now tap the playback icon, which is in the bottom right, to preview your photos and videos. And you can see there's this button here. So you just click that to download your photos and videos to your phone. And then once they're on your phone, you can now edit them directly in the Mimo app. We can share them to social media platforms. And as well, of course, you can edit them in another app if you've got something like LumaFusion, for example. To transfer your files to a computer, power on the Osmo Action 3 and connect it to a computer using a USB-C cable. A pop-up is going to appear, prompting you to select the USB connection type on the camera touchscreen. So bear in mind that when you're transferring a file, the camera cannot take photos or record videos. So the DJI Action 3 has two screens. There's a small one on the front and a bigger one on the back. And with the Action 3, both of these screens are actually touch screens. If you compare that to the GoPro Hero, it also has two screens, but only the rear screen is a touch screen. On the DJI, both screens can be used in the same way to change settings, but the front screen is about half the size. Therefore, it might be a little more fiddly to use. So notice that when you move the camera, the image in the preview window kind of eases in and eases out. The camera doesn't move exactly as you move. Rather, it's behind your movement. And so it kind of catches up. And as well, when you stop moving, it also catches up. It doesn't just stop dead. It slowly eases into a stop. So if you watch the screen, you can see there's like one or two seconds after you stop moving before the image stops moving. And this is a characteristic of digital stabilization. Before you go any further, it's a good idea just to spend a moment playing around with this. Just get a feel for it, because you might want to incorporate this into your camera movements when you're filming. So if you don't actually see this ease in, ease out characteristic, that's probably because you've got the stabilization switched off. Just look at the bottom of the touchscreen and you will see the current resolution and frame rate. And next to that is going to be your current stabilization setting. But if there's nothing there, then that means that the stabilization is switched off. To change stabilization mode, tap the resolution and frame rate setting. Or you can actually just swipe up from the bottom of the screen. And so in the top right corner, you have the current stabilization setting. 
tap that and swipe along the bottom of the screen to choose your preferred mode of stabilization. So first option is off. And notice that when you select off, the camera zooms out a little bit. And that's because digital stabilization requires cropping of the image to stabilize it. And in general, the more powerful the stabilization, the more it's going to crop into the image. So we have regular stabilization, which is called rock steady. And if you want even smoother footage, you can choose rock steady plus. But like I say, it's going to crop into the image a little bit more. Uh, so next up is horizon balancing. In this mode, the camera keeps the horizon level when you turn the camera on the roll axis. So it's going to do that up to a 45 degree angle. And at that point, it's going to switch to a new framing. So if you're going to compare this to the GoPro, the GoPro actually has an advantage here because it can keep the horizon level for the full 360 degrees. In horizon steady mode, there's more stabilization applied and therefore it crops further into the image. So note that horizon steady mode is actually limited to 2.7K resolution with a 16 to 9 frame ratio. Let's look now at the basic navigation of the touchscreen. Top left is the remaining memory on your micro SD card. And this is going to change depending on the video setting. So of course, if you switch to a higher quality setting, the amount of available memory is going to decrease. The top right is the battery level. And if you tap it, you'll get to see it as a percentage. Middle left is the gallery option. Tap to open the gallery and preview your saved photos and videos. To delete one or more files, tap the thumbnail view button, which is this sort of block of boxes or squares, uh, tap the select button, tap the three dots, and then finally just tap the trash can. So middle right is a settings button. Just tap that to access those settings. And as well, if you want to switch into pro mode, bottom left is the mode button. So tap to switch modes and then swipe up to return to the main screen. You can also access this menu by simply swiping in the middle of the screen. Bottom right is the zoom setting. Press and hold here to bring up the zoom wheel. Press to zoom in and then swipe to zoom in and out. So tap the resolution and frame rate settings to access that menu as I showed you before. And you can also swipe up from the bottom of the screen. And if we swipe down from the top of the screen, we're going to access this general settings menu. So the power button actually doubles up as a mode switch. After powering up, short press to bring up mode options. Short press again to switch modes. Then either tap the screen or just simply wait and it will select the mode that you've chosen. And by default, you can see we have two options, photo and video. But if we tap the three dots here, we can actually add more modes and options. Scroll down and add a check next to all the functions that you want to be able to access via the quick switch button. Well, you might say, why don't I just add them all? But maybe you don't want to do that because when you select modes using this button, you have to cycle through them one by one. The more you have, obviously, the longer it's going to take. So for that reason, you might be better off just adding the ones that you're going to use the most. So for me, this is where the DJI Osmo Action 3 stands out because changing simple video settings on the GoPro Hero 11 is really not straightforward. In fact, when I first got the GoPro, I was swiping around looking for simple frame rate and resolution settings. Once you figure it out, it's not too bad, but there's just much more of a learning curve. But with the DJR Osmo Action 3, setting frame rate and resolution is pretty simple and clear. Okay, so if you want standard, good quality video, switch to 4K, 6x9, and 30 frames per second. But the Osmo Action 3 also has the option to shoot in a 4x3 frame ratio. And this is actually going to use more of the sensor and it will give you more options when editing. For example, you can adjust the framing or you can crop the image to a square ratio for social media. But on the other hand, if you want to record a lot of footage and you want to save battery life and you're not too bothered about the quality, then you can switch down to 1080p. So which frame rate? Well, you can choose different frame rates depending on what you want to achieve. 24 frames per second is the movie frame rate, for example. But obviously you will need more than just a frame rate setting to make your video look like a Hollywood blockbuster. Now, 24, 30, 48, 60, 120, and 240 frames per second all fit together nicely when you're editing. And as well, 25, 50, and 100 also fit together when you're editing. 
But if you try to mix up these two groups, then you might have some problems. So this is just kind of basic key filmmaking knowledge, which I cover in the video lessons for members on Patreon. But just quickly here, the 25, 50 and 100 frames per second settings are what's known as PAL and are used in Europe and other countries with a 50 Hz electricity supply. That said, even though I live in Europe, I still actually use the 24, 30, 60, 120 and 240 frames per second settings. I just find it more convenient and they all just fit together better. So the main reason to shoot in 25, 50 and 100 frames per second is to deal with artificial light flicker. Again, I go into all these kind of things in my lessons for members on Patreon, but later in the video, I'm going to go through another way of dealing with this light flicker issue. So if you shoot at 60 frames per second, you can slow it down when you're editing to 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. And of course, that's going to create slow motion and 120 and 240 frames per second are obviously it going to create slower slow motion so it does really depend how dramatic you want your slow motion to be but bear in mind that to get 240 frames per second you can only shoot in 1080p and to get 120 frames per second you're going to need to shoot at 4k 16 by 9 or less because at 4k 4 by 3 ratio the max frame rate is 60 frames per second so this is actually another place where the gopro hero 11 does have an advantage as it's able to go a bit further with high frame rates and resolution combinations. And for example, you can shoot 240 frames per second at 2.7K in the Hero 11. So swipe down on the screen, tap the bolt button and then swipe down until you reach a setting called video compression. So by default, it seems to be HEVC, which is the newest and it's the most efficient version. But however, if you're sharing your files directly to social media, you might be better off here with H.264. The DJI Osmo Action 3 can shoot in 10-bit color, as well as the regular 8-bit color. So it might not sound much of a difference. It's only two bits, right? But actually these two bits can make a huge difference, but it does depend on the camera how much of a difference these two bits actually make. So switch to 10-bit mode, just swipe in the middle of the screen until the HDR 10-bit icon is in the middle. So this setting actually uses up more memory and it requires more processing power, which is why you can only shoot up to 30 frames per second in 4K. And you know, that basically prevents you from shooting slow motion. But if you want to shoot slow motion in 10-bit color, you can switch to a color profile called d -Cine like Tap the settings button and switch to pro mode. And now you can enable DCINE like 10 bit color. And this is like a log setting. So, this is a good setting if you want to do color work on your video. And what it does is reduce contrast and saturation so that you've got more room to maneuver when you're grading. So, to my eyes, the DCINE like profile does give you a bit more of a pro camera look rather than the sharpened action camera look. Using this profile, you might find that you are able to achieve more natural skin tones and in general just a more natural looking image that said do you really need 10-bit color Probably only if you want to go deeper into color grading your video so if you're not that bothered with color grading or you just want to make some minor adjustments here and there then i would just stick to 8-bit color so the osmo action 3 has a setting called enhanced image quality and the advantage of this is the extended dynamic range, which is going to add more highlight and shadow details. The disadvantage is that it does drain the battery quicker and it does limit the available settings as well. For example, you can't shoot 4K 4x3 in this mode. To enable it, tap the settings button on the right to open the menu. Tap the button at the bottom so that it stays on. The DJI Mimo app allows you to do pretty much the same kind of stuff that you can do using the Osmo Actions touchscreens. But the advantage is that you can use it as a remote and also you get a bigger screen. As well, you can use it to transfer the media files from the camera to your smartphone. And when they're there, you can edit them together either using the Mimo app or you can use another app like LumaFusion or something. Open the Mimo app and if your Osmo Action is powered on, the Mimo app should detect it and then connect. In the home screen, you are going to see a list of all your registered DJI devices. There's an AI editor here, which takes some of the sweat out of editing, but I have found that these AI editors do a better job if you just trim off the bad parts of your clips first. 
So there's the AI editor and there's also the template editor, which is this button at the bottom. Tap the device button to enter the camera screen. Obviously the big red button here is the shutter or record button. So if we just try recording from the app, you can see at the top, we now get an audio level meter. And that's something that you don't get on the Action 3 touchscreen. On the right here are the various modes put into a menu. So just swipe up and down to select. And we've also got the live stream option here. At the top right, you have indicators for connection, battery level, stabilization mode, and remaining memory. Center left is a zoom control. And to the left of that, we have frame rate and resolution settings. So you can also switch between original and enhanced image quality here. Below that, we can access further settings and information. Again, most of this is available within the camera, but it's just a bit easier to see and adjust things here with this bigger screen. So normally we shoot 16 by nine video with a horizontal aspect ratio. But if you want to shoot vertical video for social media, you can just turn the camera 90 degrees. So when you do this, a cross kind of appears in the middle and it's got this green line and that shows you which way is currently up. And as well, you'll see that the user interface switches to vertical mode. So if you don't actually want the orientation to switch when you rotate the camera, you can lock it. Swipe down on the screen and tap the orientation lock button to enable it. So I'm gonna lock it here in vertical mode. And when I close the window and rotate the camera, you can see that it stays in vertical mode. So we don't get any of the cross or the green line and also the UI doesn't switch. Setting shutter speed, ISO and white balance manually means that you can lock exposure so it doesn't keep changing during the shot. And this is gonna make your video look a little bit more professional, but it is obviously a little bit more time consuming. So tap the settings button on the middle right. Tap the grayed out pro button so that it goes yellow. And now you have four buttons to set exposure, white balance, color profile, and also field of view. So tap exposure. And if you leave it on auto and swipe up and down on the left of the screen, you can set an EV or exposure value. And this is going to mean that the camera will set exposure automatically, but it's going to compensate up or down depending on what you set. So if you think the image looks a bit too bright in general, and you can just bring down the EV a few points, for example. Now, if you tap M for manual, you have shutter speed on the left and ISO on the right. So in general filmmaking, we usually want as low an ISO as possible and also a slower shutter speed. And the reason for the slow shutter speed is because it adds motion blur to your video. And that's gonna make it look smoother and more natural. And here comes the catch, because motion blur also causes problems for your digital stabilization. So this is something to consider because if you select a slow shutter speed here, you might find that you start getting ugly artifacts in your video. And that's why you might wanna think twice about adding ND filters to your Osmo Action camera. Of course, when we're shooting video with a regular camera, we usually want to slow down the shutter speed so that we can add motion blur. So the problem is that digital stabilization actually prefers a nice, crisp, clear image. And that's because it uses the details in the image to make reference points. So you can first track and then fix the shaky footage. But if you've slowed the shutter speed to add motion blur, then the software can struggle to find those reference points. And that's also why the stabilization in these cameras can struggle in low light as well. So the DJI Osmo Action 3 has this protective cover here and you can easily remove that by unscrewing it. You know, you can buy some ND filters and you can just attach them here and it's very easy to do and it's gonna reduce your shutter speed. Then you might be better off switching stabilization off and then stabilizing the video with your editing software or you can mount the camera to a gimbal. There's actually a setting in the Osmo Action 3 that deals with this and it's called EIS Priority. EIS stands for Electronic Image Stabilization. Tap the settings button on the right of the screen and you're gonna see this setting called EIS Priority. If you enable this setting in low light situations, the Osmo Action 3 will try to remove motion blur and at the same time, it's gonna disable the anti-flicker. And that's because the anti-flicker 
is also to do with shutter speed. So another important setting is the field of view. Tap the settings button on the right. The FOV or field of view setting is top left. There's three settings available to select by swiping up and down on the left of the screen. So the default setting is wide. Ultra wide gives you a wider 155 degree field of view. And this has that classic action camera fisheye characteristic, you know, with the bending lines. Wide has a narrower field of view and less fisheye distortion. And then finally, we've got standard D-warp, which is even narrower, and it also removes the fisheye distortion. So this is more like a sort of smartphone camera type look. DJI suggests that you use the wide setting underwater because it will reduce the distortion. Talking of underwater, the Osmo Action 3 can go underwater down to 16 meters. And that's actually six meters more than the GoPro Hero 11, which can go down to 10 meters. The slow motion can benefit our videos in a few different ways. Firstly, it adds this extra drama and excitement. So this can be helpful for making your videos more engaging, as well as being more cinematic and visually appealing. And secondly, slow motion can help you to show your audience the action more clearly. And thirdly, slow motion makes any camera movement appear even smoother. So if we swipe to slow motion mode at the bottom, now it says 1080p and eight times. The eight times means the motion in the frame is gonna be slowed down eight times. And if we tap on it, we can now change this slow motion setting. So 1080p, we have the option to create motion eight times or four times slower. But at higher resolutions, we can only create four times slower slow motion. So the four times slower setting is obviously gonna be equivalent to the 120 frames per second setting. And the eight times setting is gonna be equivalent to 240 frames per second. Timeless video can be used to show things changing over time. And again, more visually appealing, more cinematic, more variety of shots. Swipe along to the time-lapse mode and select it. At the bottom, you can see the time-lapse will be shot in 4K at an interval of two seconds. And that means a frame is captured every two seconds, which is then gonna be played back at 30 frames per second. Tap the setting to open up the settings control window. So we've got three custom presets and a customizable option where you can set your own recording duration and interval. So the presets we've got at the moment are crowds, clouds, and sunsets, which uh, kind of sounds like a folk music album or something, doesn't it? We'll rant and we'll... Swipe along to custom and then swipe up to set parameters. So unless you're not going to be around to stop recording, you might as well set the duration to infinity and then set the interval depending on how fast you want to speed up time. So you can go all the way up to one frame every 40 seconds. But you probably only use that if you're gonna be filming for like several hours or maybe even the whole day. Or if you wanna do those night sky shots with the stars zooming across. For crowds, DJI has a frame every half a second. For clouds, it's uh, every two seconds. And for sunsets, it's every three seconds. By the way, if you have custom selected here, Back in the main screen, you can now tap the settings in the top left to go directly to those settings. So top right, you can change the resolution. And just keep this at 4K unless you really do wanna save memory space. The top left is the moon symbol, which is actually the low power mode for time-lapse videos. When the low power mode for time-lapse is enabled, the Osmo Action 3 remains in low power mode between frame capture. So this just reduces the power consumption and it's gonna allow for longer recording times. For time lapses, I do recommend that you think about setting exposure manually using the same method that I described earlier in the video. Now, if you don't, the exposure and color of the video might change during the shot and this can look a little bit messy, especially if the clouds are crossing over the sun and the light keeps changing. So once you set shutter speed, white balance, and ISO manually, they're gonna be fixed in place for the whole shot. Swipe so to select hyperlapse. The hyperlapse is where you set the interval and duration like with a time-lapse, but this time you move the camera by walking, running, or maybe attaching it to a vehicle. So again, I would switch this to 4K. And instead of settings here, you have auto, 
or you can choose how much you want to speed up time manually. So if you choose auto, the camera is going to speed up time depending on how long you film. So again, you might improve the look of the shot here if you fix the exposure by setting it manually. To make my hyperlapses a little bit more cinematic, I like to add motion blur using CapCut. And when you do this, passing cars and people have this kind of blurriness, which gives an extra sort of dynamism to the video. And it really just enhances the hyperlapse effect. So all you do is import the clip, swipe to the motion blur effect, and then just play around with the settings until it looks right. So these are my settings. You can copy those if you want. So it can be really useful to use your phone as a remote. Connect to the DJ app and now you can monitor and control the camera. Here's some ideas to use this setup. Stick the camera to something metal and now you can use your phone to maybe take a picture of yourself and anyone with you. This way you don't have to mess about with the timer, try and run into position and it's always tricky to get those timer shots to come out well. And it's generally a more relaxing way to take a picture and you're going to get better framing as well. If you're going to use the Osmo Action 3 for vlogging, you can actually turn off the rear microphone and just use the front microphone and that might help to reduce some of the background noise. Tap the setting button middle right and then you're going to need to enable pro mode, then enable directional audio and you can also switch on wind reduction here if it's windy. If you are recording outside, then you should probably have this switched on. So if you want to add an external mic, you're going to need to connect it via the USB-C charging port. If you have the DJI mic, for example, the receiver can plug directly into the camera here. I actually have the Rode Wireless Go 2, and I can also plug that in here. By the way, when you want to add a mic to the GoPro, you're going to need an extra module to add onto the camera. So I'd definitely say the DJI is more convenient and it's cheaper if you wanted to add external mics. And once you have a mic plugged in, you're going to see this mic icon in the right corner on the main screen. And you can see right now it's picking up the sound from the road no problem. So there's actually another way to deal with the artificial light flicker. Swipe down to open general settings. Tap the bolt button. Swipe down until you reach anti-flicker. So for the US, you can set this to 60 hertz. For Europe, you can set this to 50 hertz. And for other countries, you just need to check the frequency. It'll either be 50 or 60, obviously. So if you want to reserve battery power when you're using your DJI Osmo Action, there's a few settings you can change to be more efficient with your power usage. So swipe down on the screen and tap the sun symbol. This is your screen brightness, which is by default 100%. So you can bring it down to 80% or lower if you want, and that is going to save you some battery power. You can switch off voice prompt. So if you're using voice prompt, just turn it off. And turning it off is going to use less power. You can also enable screen switch, and that means that you only have one of the touchscreens on at a time. And so obviously that's going to mean that your battery is only having to power one of the screens. You've also got the option to set the camera to turn off the screen when it's recording. Scroll down and then find that screen off when record option. So by default this is set to never, but you can choose a time after which it will switch off the screen. And on the same screen you can actually disable the LED light which is on the front. And again, it will just save a tiny bit of battery. Now, if you're filming in a hot country, another thing that you can do to save battery is to keep your camera out of direct sunlight as much as you can. Because as soon as the camera reaches 40 plus degrees, you know, the battery is going to start to drain faster. And I wouldn't use those settings for normal use, just for when saving battery is a priority. And whatever camera you're using, you need basic filmmaking skills to get the most from it. And for members on Patreon, we've got all kinds of lessons for editing, understanding shutter speed, ISO, white balance, all this kind of stuff. We've also got a very lively and creative community on Discord where we can share our work and we can give each other feedback. And it's a very fun, creative community. So if you want to join us there, that would be cool. Otherwise, I'm going to see you in the next video that I see you in. Bye.